northeast of the east. Storm Emma is going to bring blizzard conditions to much of the country. We now have red warnings in Scotland and southwest England. It is the message. This is really severe. You know, we don't see red warnings very often, so really only drive if you really have to. That's the message today. Hundreds of drivers have been trapped in their cars overnight as freezing conditions continue to grip the country with 10 severe weather warnings in place today. Um, but yeah, it is pretty heavy. We've seen accumulations of between up to a metre in certain parts of the country. Hi there, we've had some huge snow drifts over the last 24 hours, as much as 50 centimetres of snow falling in parts of South Wales through yesterday and overnight. Snow, ice and powerful winds continue to cause widespread disruption right around the country. A Met Office red danger to life warning covering southwest England and South Wales has now been lifted, but yellow alerts for snow, ice and wind are still widely in force. Travelling tonight from east to west is absolutely horrendous. If I put the window down, hopefully you can see that it's driving snow. I don't know, we've probably got... Uh, six or seven inches here morning and welcome to today's vlog. Uh, so as you can see from the surroundings it's a little bit snowy. It's quite early in the morning and it's also a little bit eerie. So it's been cold here in the UK now for about the last five or so days and uh, the reason for that is uh, what's been uh, dubbed as the beast from the east. Now if, you, uh, if you're in the UK, then you're gonna get that because it's affected everywhere. But if you're not, basically what happens is normally is that all of our weather systems either come from the West, which is the Atlantic, or the South, which is continental Europe, and they bring usually warmish air. So even when it's cold, even when it's winter, we'll only get the odd snow because the air is normally warmer from where it's coming from. But just over the last few days, the air has been coming across from the East, which is Scandinavia, Siberia. And on top of that, we had a storm that's come up from Portugal all the way up through France and up to us called Storm Emma. And last night and yesterday afternoon, we got the full effect of Storm Emma, or well, actually probably not the full effect, but still enough to deposit a lot of snow um, in, our, in our area. And the result is this. So basically, I'm out this morning nice and early i would say bright and early but yeah nice and early because i was hoping for one or two things i was hoping either, either a there's going to be a break in the clouds and we get a really nice maybe sunrise <laughs> no chance of that or b that it'd be really misty and atmospheric and it is so what my plan is today i've come over to a, a local field that's probably 15 minute walk away from my house and I'm going to take a shot of this row of trees over here uh, and it's really nice because behind the trees that you can't see at the moment is a huge hill called the Sharp and Ho Clappers and that is shrouded in mist completely so it's covered so you can't see it so all you're getting right here really is the snow the line of trees with the uh, hedge and then just white out behind which is exactly what I want for these moody shots it's actually not that cold out here because there's no wind at all so you've just got the the ambient air temperature and i don't even need gloves so it's actually quite pleasant um so i've come around to this tree here or come around to take a shot of this tree here 
and uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm just going for a really almost like a fine art look here uh, I've got the tree in the center of the frame vertically but in the top third horizontally uh, I've overexposed by one stop I've got some of the bush either side I can see this probably as a square crop hopefully it will pick up some of these uh, grasses because there's this is a ploughed field clearly and you can see the plough lines going uh, across the shot so you should be able to see the ploughed field as well or some of the uh, some of the ruts in the field along with some of these grasses that are just sticking up so if I when I get it back home and have a look at it in Lightroom I'll pull out some of the blacks a bit more uh, just to just to maybe emphasize these little grass blades here and it'll probably darken well it will definitely darken down the tree as well because at the moment the trees it's all very uh, it's all very sepia actually it's quite sepia looking the tree is quite uh, it's not really a gray it's sort of a very uh, it's sort of an off brown if that makes sense sort of a very sepia like brown so I think these will look let's just take another one while I'm here my battery's running now actually in this cold weather Yeah, they're going to look really nice. They're really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very minimalist, that's for sure. And quite, a, not, not abstract, because it's a picture of a tree, but quite, it, it's sparse, that's the word. It's very sparse and it's going to be, I think it's going to be really nice because it's quite so sparse. Well, the old wind's just starting to pick up a little bit now, making it a bit nippier. Uh, I've moved around again, uh, like I said I was going to do, and I'm shooting down the line of the trees now. Uh, this tree over the back here is still my uh, point of interest, still the point I want the eye to start at as it leads it down. Uh, well, in, in the panoramic shot that I'm taking anyway. Uh, so, yeah, that's still the tree. I think that's probably the best tree here. But there's a lovely line of trees now that are just disappearing off in the distance as you move around the move your perspective around a little bit. So uh, I haven't really talked too much about camera settings other than the fact that I'm overexposing. Uh, so I just to let you know that basically this shot here is it's about one and a half stops over that I'm shooting, and it's a fifth of a second at f11. So. And then what I do for panoramas, I'm sure everyone does it anyway, so I don't want to teach you how to suck eggs, but I'll, I'll put it in manual mode. I'll get the exposure correct on the first shot and I'll focus on the first shot. Now, I use back button focusing, so I don't, I don't worry about turning off my manual focus because once I've locked it in on the back button, when I take the shot with the shutter button, it doesn't change the focus anyway. So I'll lock in the focus with the back button focusing on the first shot and then all I'm doing is just moving it around a little bit each time and taking a shot and then I'll stitch them together in Lightroom. The key thing really for me uh, with that is, well for everyone I assume, but for me as well, is to make sure that your tripod is completely level. So you've got most tripods have a little spirit level on them, make sure that's level. And then I've also got a little level display on my uh, camera because I tend to shoot these in live mode, live view so I can see what I'm doing uh, and yeah that's that's then make sure that the shots level as it goes round
So I've just ventured around the other side of the hedge and actually there's a really nice bend, like a, a little curve that runs around the curve of the hedge as it runs around. So, and I've got this tree in the foreground here and the hedge. So that basically the hedge leads you into the tree, which leads you into the rest of the hedge. And then you've got this, uh, you've got this lovely, just vanishing line of trees that vanish off into the mist. And then the other third of the frame is just filled with nothing. So you're just vanishing off into nothing. Uh, it's, uh, it's rather pleasing. I think I'm about done here. Uh, I've got the shots that I came for. I've got those m sort of really arty shots with the mist and the trees vanishing off into it and some very minimalist shots. Hopefully they'll come out okay. Um, you never know till you get home, but looking in the back of the camera, a couple of them look quite nice, so we should be good there. Um, just out of interest, uh, I've set up a Facebook page, which I'll put a link to in the description. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you if you wanted to come and join me there because what I want to do with the Facebook page is I want to make it a bit more of an interactive experience. So whereas when 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 you're vlogging, you just generally tend to be talking to uh, you know yourself really, um, and you get a bit of feedback with comments, but you don't have that opportunity really to interact as much as you want to. So I set up a Facebook page and what I aim to do on that really is post a lot more of the pictures that I've taken so you can actually spend a bit more time looking at them if that's what you want to do. I mean, Jesus, I don't know. You might not want to. You might, once might be enough. Um, and all, but also like I might put in some little bits, some links to some other posts that other people do, some interesting articles, maybe some like little teasers of the videos before they come out. Uh, maybe you know ask for some suggestions on on where I can go and, and what people want me to do uh, other than shut the channel down and <laughs> never vlog again um, yeah so uh, I'd like it I'd really like it if you join me there um, I'm, I'm hoping to build that up a little bit and uh, we'll see where we go but anyway from uh, from a snowy uh, sharp and hoe I'd like to say thanks for watching I uh, hope you enjoyed it uh and um, you know subscribers blah blah likes blah people I should imagine you get bored with that don't you do you get bored with that do you get bored with people going if you like it thumb it up and if you want to subscribe please subscribe i do that every single week so i'm not doing that this week although essentially i just did but i'm not doing that this week so i'm just going to say thanks for watching and i really hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you next time <laughs>